Uh, I'm Victor Ardulf. I'm from Santa Cruz, California. I'm a student at UC Santa Cruz, um, and this is part of the Motor Assistive Glove. And the idea is to tackle the problem of peripheral neuropathy. So a lot of people, especially following stroke, um, they will lose the ability to move their fingers in full range. So they'll have something small motion like this, but not a full grasping motion. It limits their freedom at home, and it's a very long rehabilitation cycle. So what we did is we got force sensitive resistors um, that can detect small amounts of pressure being applied to them. And when you apply that pressure, we say, oh, you want to move your, you want to move your finger, let us help you. So what we do is we start actuating these uh, motors down here that have a steel cable that wraps around the spool. The steel cable runs up the wrist through the finger, and as it wraps up, it curls the finger for you. If at any point you relieve the tension, it will stop and pause your finger in that position. And if at any point you want to release the grip, if you just release a little bit, we say, okay, and we start unwinding the spool, and this elastic band on the back will actually return the finger back uh, into the so natural position. there's only position. a single motor for each. Each finger. finger has a single motor, yeah. And what are, you have sort of all these holes around the finger. Are they for adjusting the way it curls? Or? So these guys down here, that's actually for sewing the rings into the glove oh. um, so that they don't move around and so that it, it sits in a specific position on the finger. Um, this is just kind of iterations of our mechanical design. Uh, we started off thinking we were going to use a spring, so we had this big loop at the top mm -hmm. um, so that the spring could fit through it. Turns out springs don't, don't really care for being deflected. They only care if they're being stretched. Uh, so we had to move away from that idea and move on to the elastic. It's, it's kind of been stuff like uh, at the end of our sensor, we used to have these long leads, but they break really easily when you move them around a lot. So we had to get rid of those and we went for short leads that come up at an angle. It's, it's been a really like long learning process of how it's done. And uh, we're hoping to push this project to a point where we're comfortable releasing it to a community that wants to develop So what's the brain behind it? What are you developing? Uh, the brain behind it, uh, we're developing on a microchip PIC32. Um, it, the reason why we chose it is we had a lot of software libraries already built up to it. Uh, our university uses these in a lot of classes uh, for embedded software. And so we were most comfortable with this guy and we wanted to kind of remove all uncomfortable situations we could put ourselves into later. Uh, so we built this and then we created our own PCB layout uh, that is actually designed to fit just on top like that and snap and is, in. And is that just the Arduino? Yeah, um, it's a it's a chip kit that's developed by Digilent, mm -hmm. um, and it has the Arduino form factor, so it just but it's, snaps if someone in. someone wanted to use an Arduino, yeah, or they could. The Raspberry Pi to Arduino adapter. Exactly. Totally cool. Yeah. Okay. If you want to learn more about it, go to motorassistiveglove.github.io or email us at motorassistiveglove at gmail.com. Thank you so much for sharing this.